All of the world's continents and ecological regions have their own large herbivore, like bison, elephants, and the guanacos and tapirs in South America. Despite the many differences between each of the continent's largest animals, they are all at least partly hoofed, four-legged, and move around by walking or galloping, which is what you would expect for large animals. But in Australia, evolution took a very different turn, as the largest herbivore on the continent is the red kangaroo which stands on two legs and move around by hopping, which is the complete opposite of what you would think would be beneficial for a large herbivore. So why did these herbivores evolve so differently than on any other continent? Although the kangaroos are the largest animal in Australia today, this has only become the case relatively recently. About 30 to 40,000 years ago, like many other places around the world, Australia had its own giant Ice Age era beasts, the largest of them being an animal called Diprotodon. Diprotodon was significantly larger than kangaroos, as it may have been able to grow to the size of a rhino. And it wasn't just the largest Australian animal at the time, but the largest marsupial known to have ever lived. Diprotodon wasn't closely related to kangaroos, and was actually more closely related to wombats, and like them, it walked on all fours. So in the not too distant past, Australia's largest animals didn't hop, so some of the reason that Australia's largest animal is so strange will be down to this fairly recent extinction of some of its largest animals. However, even among similarly sized herbivores in other parts of the world, the kangaroo's way of movement is still unique. The largest animal outside of Australia that move in a similar way are the spring hares in Africa, that barely weigh more than a few kilos. So it seems strange that an animal would have retained the ability to hop while evolving to get so large. But surprisingly, two legs actually works really well for kangaroos, as they actually use less energy while running than many other similarly sized mammals. Kangaroos and Australia's other hopping marsupials were once maligned as being more primitive than the mammals in the rest of the world, and that their ability to hop around was a symptom of this. However, this is now widely disregarded. Hopping around might seem quirky, but that's only because so few animals outside of Australia travel like this and even though it may not look like it, hopping is actually highly efficient. Unlike humans and other mammals that jump using a lot of muscular efforts, a kangaroo's legs are shaped so that when their heel strikes the ground, their Achilles tendons are stretched out storing some of the energy from the last hop, that when they contract, propel them into the air like a spring, meaning that once they get up to speed, they only have to input a small amount of muscle force into each new hop, as a lot of the force was retained from the last jump, like a bouncy ball. Most animals, including humans, expend more and more energy the faster they travel, but because of their legs, once kangaroos get up to speed, the amount of energy they use doesn't change very much or can even decrease. And interestingly, studies have shown that for the largest two-legged animals that hop, kangaroos and wallabies, the hopping process may be even more efficient relative to their size than some of the smaller marsupials. But hopping also has disadvantages as well which may be the reason that it is so rare, especially outside of Australia. Kangaroos are very efficient while cruising at a moderate speed, but use more energy than walking while moving slowly. Plus, stability can be an issue for hopping animals when the ground isn't flat, which actually makes sense in Australia because it is the flattest continent in the world. So despite the kangaroos' appearance, their hopping is actually quite efficient. But this doesn't necessarily even really matter. The largest animal will usually be a reflection of the animals that are already living in that ecosystem, and so it is largely down to chance. Animals will generally trend to get larger over time, provided that it doesn't hinder them in other areas, and that there aren't animals already filling the niche, as being really big is one of the best defences for survival. But they will eventually reach a limit at the point where they are unable to gather enough food in their ecosystem to sustain their body mass. So the larger animals in any given ecosystem are largely due to what animal occupied the niche first. However, the largest animal in a specific environment will nearly always be herbivorous, because they have access to higher amounts of food. Because predators are secondary consumers, they get their energy from plants that have already been eaten by their prey, which means the vast majority of energy that a predator's prey eats doesn't pass on to the predator. This means that predators will always have less food available, and so they will almost always run into their size limits much earlier than a herbivore would. In Australia, there are and were many herbivorous animals that travelled around by hopping on two legs, or at least hopping on two legs is a much more common way for animals to get around in Australia than it is almost anywhere else. 
so it was much more likely that one of these animals was going to evolve and fill the niche of a large herbivore in Australia than in other parts of the world. Two leg hopping would only have to be good enough and not necessarily perfect. Not very long ago, kangaroos had a much larger relative called Procoptodon, or the giant kangaroo, that went extinct about 15,000 years ago. Procoptodon was only slightly taller than a modern day kangaroo, standing around 2 meters tall, but had a much heavier build, weighing around 200 to 250 kilos. Like a kangaroo, Procoptodon had very large hind legs and almost certainly walked bipedally, but there are many differences in their limb bones and other aspects of their morphology that has led researchers to believe that these large beasts had lost their ability to hop. And this makes sense, seeing as the way that kangaroos get around causes enormous stress on their muscles and tendons. Kangaroos manage by having absolutely massive tendons in their heels, but eventually a large enough body will become too taxing on the animal for this way of movement. So the Procoptodon had evolved to the point where hopping was no longer a good way for them to move around, but still lived and at one point thrived in Australia, walking on two legs, simply because they had ancestors that moved this way. However, this isn't the whole story because why does Australia have so many bipedal hopping animals for this to have happened in the first place? This isn't entirely understood, but the easiest explanation would be that it was because hopping is more energy efficient. Most two-legged hopping animals, including the few placental animals that travel this way, live in arid environments, so it makes sense why they would need to move as efficiently as possible, and why many of them have evolved in Australia. However, the problem with this is that at the moment, studies have only shown better efficiency in large animals like kangaroos and wallabies, and small rodent-sized two-legged hopping animals don't seem to have any energetic advantages over similar-sized four-legged animals. Adding to this, the only reason this method of travel is more efficient is because of the incredibly specialized spring-loaded legs that these animals have that would have had to evolve first in order to gain the advantages of hopping. So why did these animals adapt this way in the beginning? Another explanation is that the origin of moving by hopping came from small animals so they could better evade attacks from predators. At least among rodents that hop on two legs, they are actually better at avoiding attacks from predators than their other quadrupod rodents so it is possible that small hopping animals evolved powerful hind legs in order to leap out of the path of an attacking predator, but over time, as they became more hind leg dominant, perfected the art of hopping on their hind limbs. So hopping may be rare, but it isn't necessarily any worse than walking or galloping to get around, and instead, like most things, has its advantages and disadvantages, even for large animals. A combination of how animals have evolved differently in Australia due to its isolation, with some surprising advantages to hopping on two legs, saw large animals in Australia evolve to move very differently to almost anywhere else in the world. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.